Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now we are going to get right back into the five steps to real estate success. We are now on step number five. Nail the sale. Now we're almost done with this book, so it's certainly going to be uh, some of the information about not just education, but application, how we're applying what it is that we're learning right here. So without further ado, let us go ahead and get into step five, nail the sale. Now getting a property under contract and then moving a deal to the closing table means working your way through a long to-do list. Don't get overwhelmed either by what lies ahead or by the demands of your clients. The more information you have and the more you convey to your buyer or seller, the easier it is to get the to-dos moved to the done list. And once they're all moved, your hard work is rewarded with the commission check. Realtors are problem solvers, says Liz Halford Ward. In the industry, just three years, Ward is already a top-selling agent. She adds, it is my responsibility to make my client aware of all the options at every step along the way. These thoughts are echoed by other successful agents across the country. Nailing a sale is about education, educating your buyer or seller, guiding them through the selling process and helping them solve their problems. By keeping their interests in mind at all times, you can move from offer to contract to closing with minimum hassles and better commission checks. Preparing sellers for an offer. Sellers and their agents should have a discussion about offers before the first one comes in. When you represent the sellers, educate them about the process, explain step by step how an offer is presented, the types of contingencies it might contain, how you can counter an offer and what to do about low ball offers. Then get their feedback. You should be very clear about the terms under which they will accept other than price and time frame. How long would they be willing to wait for a buyer to pre-approve for their loan? Hmm. Would they want to take the property off the market so for a buyer who isn't approved? What if the buyers must sell their home in order to buy your seller's home? Will the sellers consider offers contingent upon the successful sale of a buyer's current home? How do sellers anticipate their move out will go? If they need to make their time transferring their belongings or are worried the closing on their new home might be delayed, you can help by countering the escrow time as close of escrow plus number of days. Your seller can then rent the home from the new owners by the day until they are moved out. If you haven't already discussed it, as suggested in step four, 
Have your sellers make a list of all items not considered part of the purchase price. Any items the sellers aren't attached to but could be taken should be listed separately. You may need such items to bargain with during negotiations. In addition, explain to your sellers that they should expect the buyers to request certain items, such as special light fixtures, area rugs, and window treatments. Liz Halford Ward, an agent in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, lists portable storage sheds and hot tubs as strong bargaining chips for the seller. That doesn't mean sellers have to include them. But knowing ahead of time that they may be requested helps the seller maintain composure if negotiations become difficult. Hot tip. Liz Halford Ward had this advice. On occasions, when the buyer wants items that clearly are personal property, for example, furniture, artwork, lawnmowers, and bicycles. I insist the buyer and seller work this out on their own. This kind of negotiation should be totally removed from the real estate transaction, helping buyers make an offer. As soon as buyers show signs that a particular property is the one, are close enough to the one? Suggest writing an offer. If your market is fast moving, let them know if they don't act quickly, someone else could get the home. However, there is a fine line between making a suggestion and giving a hard sale. The buyers might even confuse one with the other. Too much pressure. Badly timed pressure. Our tactlessness can kill the sell at this point. Even though the buyers have decided on a house and are on the urge of putting down a deposit, discuss the property. Have a discussion with the buyers that is low-key enough not to be interpreted as a hard sell. If you are not acting as a buyer's representative, the discussion will be limited by your obligations to the seller. If you are a buyer's agent, factor that the buyer should be aware of are 1. Price too high. When a house is overpriced and hasn't received any offers, a low offer could get a response. There is a chance that the sellers won't budge at which time your buyer can either overpay or look for another home. Number two, price too low. When a house is listed below market value, the sellers are trying to move the house quickly or they have an incompetent agent. An underpriced house is likely to sell at or above the asking price. Length of time on the market is number three. Owners may be anxious after months without selling. They may be willing to accept an offer now that they wouldn't have considered when the house was first listed. Patience. Reduction in price. One drop probably means the house was initially overpriced. Several drops probably means the homeowners are anxious to sell. Number five is seven of them. Eagerness of sellers. If the sellers are divorcing or have fallen into default, default excuse me, on their mortgage. They are likely to accept a lower offer if your client is in the position to close the sale quickly. Number six. Other timing factors. Sellers may be willing to take less money if they are expenses about to come in such as winter heating bills or property tax payments, generally due in January and July. 
the competition is number seven. It's, is this house likely to receive multiple offers? Hmm. Or are there unlikely to be other serious buyers? Is the market for this type of property hot? Or is it likely to remain unsold if the particular buyers fall through? Formulate the offer. Deciding on an offering price means weighing how much the buyer can afford against the lowest price you think the sellers will accept. The outcome of the equation should be a number that is easily defendable. You don't want the buyer to get hooked on a figure that you can't explain to the sellers and the agent. For instance, a property is listed for $200,000, has not received another offer, and needs new windows. After fielding some estimates on the windows, you determine that the replacement cost would be approximately $25,000. That means an offer of $175,000 can be explained as the bearing cost of the windows. Remind the buyer that when making a lower offer, it is best to keep the contingencies to a minimum. A number that would be accepted on its own could be rejected by insulted sellers who don't want to throw in a refrigerator and drapes too. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't include contingencies. They could seal the deal later on when the seller wants to negotiate. Again, educating your client is the best way to proceed. Explain at once in the negotiation stage. The seller might think the offer is low, but be willing to take it if the buyer is flexible about the time of the closing or inclusion of the pool equipment. With the agent seller or a slow market, buyers can ask for many contingencies without seeming unreasonable. But if the market is hot or the house has multiple offers, the sellers may not want to be bothered with a lot of contingencies and may sell the house to the bidder who presents the least complicated offer, even if it's slightly below the highest offer. Help your buyer to understand how to weigh the condition of the house, the market, the listing price, and a seller's frame of mind to come up with an offer. Of course, as with setting a listing price, the buyer has the final say. It is your job to educate and be professional, but the money is theirs to spend presenting offers. After two decades of fielding offers, Brenda Eager explains the most important step in the process. Before you even present an offer to your seller, you need to understand the financial qualifications of the buyer. Read pre-qualification letters carefully. Buyers can get them from the internet or even from a local lender without a credit check or income verification. That makes them worthless. You must be able to interpret these letters to determine which are valid and which aren't. It's always better to go with a buyer who is pre-approved rather than pre-qualified. And our next section, because I'm going to end it right here, is going to be presenting to your sellers. So with that, I want you and your family to be blessed. Have a wonderful rest of this evening. Until I speak with you um, here again on Poem Praise 2, I do want you to Take care, be well, and it be at thy will. I will talk with you soon. Till next time. Later, y'all.